Hey everybody, Andy here, AK Montolio, and we're back for another Vintage League today, and we are playing Cradlebine. <clears throat> so seeing a lot of Cradlebine videos out of me out of the last week, and I'm going to continue giving this deck list a try here. This is a play off of Canister's LCQ winning deck list. Uh, I believe my main deck is the same, with the exception of I have an extra main deck Beseju than them. I'm not sure what their, their extra card is uh, in place of that. And my sideboard is very similar. I believe that they are running two Archive Traps, and my focus is Mind Break Trap instead of Archive Trap. So, yeah, you guys enjoy the video. Thanks for hanging out. Please hit the like and subscribe button, and we're going to see you in round one. Okay, round one, Vintage League. We are playing Cradle Vine. We've won the die roll. And this is a pretty easy powder. don't think we should gamble with this, but one thing I will say about my opponent is that I know them to be a jewel shops player. They do have range, and not to say that they're on that for sure, but if we can find a bazaar or a, a land of some sort that produces mana, we do have a turn one collector roof. So I am going to try this. Banking on that, we will find one of those two things off of this once upon a time. Because if we find the land, Collector Roof should be very good for us. Now, what we're going to do after the Collector Roof is a question we will worry about next turn. If we find a Bazaar, we can set it up for the following turn. So let's see what we get. So this is a really, really smart force of will from my opponent. I'm just going to pass turn. I'm not going to expose the box. My opponent sensed weakness from me, and they got me with the force. So it's pretty awesome. Oh, no. Just completely punished. <laughs> so my turn one collector roof would not have paid off here in this particular instance against Dredge. And I don't take as much um, uh, discontent out of my line knowing that we don't really have a great turn one against game one against Dredge anyways. Not that you ever want to concede a match, but I really liked my line of thinking there knowing my, my opponent. Uh, they do audible towards these, these fast mana artifact decks. You know, smelting vats, coveted jewel. They've got a lot of trophies with those particular decks. So my line was not terrible in that regard. And I mean, most people do not force a will once upon a time. And it's not like it was a telegraphed play where I sat there and I really thought about my play. I was very quick to hit uh, that I was going to keep it. So my opponent just... Uh, probably did not want to give me an opportunity to find a wasteland there and just proactively force a willed. So I don't think force of vigor is really that great in this matchup. Hex Drinker has been a surprising good card against Dredge. It has won me so many games. It's not a place that you would think would be good, but it actually is quite decent. Maybe I'll just keep a couple Force of Vigors in, just as Hollow One Insurance. We still have the Besajus as well in our deck, and of course we can just go over top of a, a Hollow One. Really what we just need to focus on is controlling their graveyard over the first number of turns, and we should be favored to stabilize from there. But Dredge is always a tough matchup. Actually, you know what? This is very fringe, but hitting a bazaar could also be a thing. It's The Besaju in this type of deck is too slow, typically, for that sort of thing, but I think the benefit outweighs the risk uh, is that the Besaju hits both Hollow One and Bazaar, whereas the Force of Vigor just hits Hollow One. And the likelihood my opponent is able to kill me with Hollow Ones is not great. 
Okay, let's see how we can do here. Yeah, the hand is a little bit suspect, but I think it's keepable. Like in this type of a matchup, we've got the bazaar, we've got the strip mine, but we really need something to control the graveyard. So we have to hope there's a good bazaar for us. Like surgical extraction. Um, I will play this out in case my opponent has a grief. And I could see them very much starting with a grief here. There's no point in giving it to them for free. The Mox Ruby, it does pump my stuff. Yeah, I mean, you know, not ideal, but... Well, actually it is because I have another Bazaar, but... I'm going to Bazaar pre-combat here. I mean, what the Lotus represented there was two things. It was threatening a endurance and also threatens to pump the Blazing Root Wallas, but I believe the other cards are more valuable. Because this will allow me to cast an Endurer should I find one. And of course the Strip Mine and Surge will go without saying. So we'll see. My opponent has a mitt full here. I'm not feeling super optimistic about this, but... Well, hopefully they don't have any dredgers. Okay, so not a bad, bad one. I am going to strip them here. And in the upkeep, I am going to try and surgical extraction the bazaars. Look, I realize that the Icarid here is going to come in and it's a threat and all that stuff, but I feel like Icarid I can manage. I feel like they're a lot worse off if I get their bazaar. And yeah, it sucks if they have the, uh, okay, we just got the bazaars. Their hand is not great, but we certainly could lose from here. But this is a very good start for us getting rid of those. I could surgical for another one, but I think I can wait a turn here. The question is, is that my opponent has the strip mine here. Okay. Oh, excuse me, they've already, that's in their graveyard. There's their hand. Okay, that's a good card. Well, I mean... Pretty awkward. But we are going to hard cast an endurance during their turn here and just get rid of these. All right.
I might actually, I just think it's Force of Vigor is just probably the better card on the draw than the Besaju. Let's try this out. Yeah, I mean, this hand is awkward that we have, but very powerful. So we're going to keep it and just hope our Bazaar can shape us up. Okay, that's a pretty good dredge for them. So I am going to at the end of their turn once upon a time. And the reason I'm going to do this is my opponent one has already shown me that they're very apt to force a will a once upon a time. And number two, we don't want to turn on force and negation. Yes, we're losing an extra card by doing it this way, seeing an extra card. But I think this is a reasonable thing to do here. So, Endurance is the card we want. I mean, I like the Bazaar here. Okay. So, that was a really good draw for us. So, we are definitely going to attack that. Um, do I let this go? I don't think I do. I think I, I'd be very proactive here. My opponent is low on resources. And if they have an Oxus Revival, we do have an answer to that. And this is what makes this so much more tenable, is that we have the misstep. Oh, they've got a double. Okay. I, I mean, that's pretty good. But it resets them here, and I don't know what they have in their hand, but hopefully we've bought some time by doing this. I think we're really looking for a surgical extraction here, or and a way and or a wasteland. Okay. Seiju is definitely a worthy consideration here. The question is, do I keep this to pitch to force of vigor? I don't think so. Because of the fact I might draw a Gaius Cradle, it might be extremely important to have the second creature in play. So I am weighing the Gaius Cradle out more than I am over the Force of Vigors, because I only have two in my deck. So my opponent missed there. Okay, we got a bit lucky there. My opponent is struggling to find dredgers. And if we can find a cradle here of any sort, we can kill their bazaar. Okay, so that's not what I'm looking for. So we are going to go for this and see if we can find something. That was a tough decision. If they want to trade here, I think I'm okay with this. 
I realize that a, a, cra a gay is cradle, I can cast an endurance if I find one, but, and I'm also aware that I might get wastelanded here, but, okay, once again, we're getting a bit lucky. We are going to need some help here this turn, and I think we have a pretty reasonable chance of finding an answer. Once again, this puts us up to five. Yeah, we did not find it, unfortunately. All right. I mean, we're asking a lot here, but let's hope they miss a game. They didn't. They hit their best dredger, as a matter of fact. All right. So we are going to need more than removing their bazaar now, which is unfortunate. There's the gayest cradle. And they found an Icarid. Now that one's going for sure. We are going to be facing down a huge army here this following turn, unfortunately. I'm going to need to kill the bazaar. I'm really, really not happy about this particular situation, but it just is what it is. Like, I am facing down a big army here. But I have to kill this bazaar, because if I don't, they're just going to go absolutely nuts on me. And it, it's bad for me. They have one card in hand. It could be another bazaar. They drew several cards. It is possible. You know, the other option is I trying once upon a time here to find an endurance but it requires me it, it just doesn't make sense to do that i'm gonna have to uh sadly do this So, it's a bit of a tough spot. The good news is, is my, my, my opponent's creatures are mostly coming in play tapped here. Yeah. So, I am going to have a turn to kill them here. I just have to hope that they don't hit uh, any Narcomibras or anything off their dredge. And they didn't. Okay, so I think we might have this. It's going to be close. I'm going to bizarre in the upkeep because there's no reason not to. So I can only pump two of them anyways. So I'm one short of actually killing them. And I believe I'm going to die on the swing back, right? Three. These did not hit. A creeping chill probably does it. So let's look at Icarids first. They have two Icarids, so that's six coming back. Best Dredger is currently a Stinkweed. 28 cards left. They are missing... They have one Creeping Chill left. Okay, so that's not the worst. And they have one Narc Amoeba left. So I'm going to be taking three, six, nine... Seven. And this is the one I'm not as concerned about. And I can just chump block one. So it would be three, six, nine. I can definitely chump block one. If they hit a creeping chill, it would be nine that they're dealing me. And silver smote. 
comes into play tapped. All right, I think I'm okay. Just leave this back. Three, six, seven, eight, I can deal. And I don't think there's any reason to play the mocks here. Very close game. And then we have to fade their dredge. That's going to be the big one for me here. They did hit the chill, unfortunately. Okay, that makes it a lot harder for me. All right, we got there. Nice win for us. All right, guys, we will see you next round. All right, here we are in round two, and we have a keep here. Funky Monkey is typically a bizarre player. Not today, though. Uh-oh. So the good news is, is we do have a turn one collector who should be able to resolve. We need to get to our turn, though, before they go something nuts on us. They still can PO very easily here. Okay. Not happy to see the top here, but... Unless they find exactly Academy. Okay. Three cards in hand, and they have had a look at top. I mean, I guess we just bizarre. I almost wish I had a hollow one to bait the force of will off them. It doesn't seem like they're very likely to bite on anything I'm doing here. And we just got to hope that the collector roof resolves. I mean, I think it's just a pretty much an automatic win if it does. They're not F6. And let's see. They have a force on top. Okay. We have another crack at an oof next turn, potentially, if we can find one. Mentor, yeah, that's pretty unfortunate. We're unlikely to beat that. But a collector roof is a card that could do it here if we found one. But we're going to have a hard time beating the mentor for sure. They are hellbent. Collector roof. We did not find a collector roof. Um, I mean, I think we spin again, right? And try. We did not get one.
Okay. I don't think there's a lot of point in attacking here, but maybe I just do. I realize that they're going to crack their tack top and start cracking back at me but they have a mana crypt and if there's some way for me to win i believe that this is the best way and my opponent might be suspicious of something i'm doing here because i discarded a hollow one but let's see yeah and that's the correct way for my opponent to do this Of note, my opponent also may inadvertently attack their main mentor into my Ruola, thinking I can't pump it. I got somebody last week with that exact same line. They just didn't, I can only presume, did not see it. Now, they still have a card in hand here, and that could go very badly for me, but... All right. That gigs up and they cast their top again. That's a lot of damage coming through. Okay, time walk's gonna do it. All right. I'm not sure what version they're on, but Lavinia could be a thing here. don't think Hex Drinker is what I'm looking to do. I'm going to cut a Bloodgast. Okay, that's a nice looking hand. We have a turn two collector roof. And once again, uh, it's probable to get forced or removed, but we have to put our opponent to the test. This hand is quite strong. We got some solid discard equity here. If we find a vine, force of vigor would be strong. One of the deficiencies of this particular hand is that if we get tabernacled, uh, obviously our cradle is going to be less effectual. We will get the blood gas back. Okay. As always, my philosophy is make your opponent have it. And getting tabernacled here is very suboptimal, but I mean, it's just, they have to have it. I really like the mind break trap here because if my opponent goes off, it gives me a lot of, uh... yep, pithing needles in. This is one of the features of our deck that we don't need the bizarre typically more than one activation now of course that's subjective it's not always the case but more often than not and this is an example of my hand here that you know our next play is not reliant on bizarre now would i like to filter that serum powder for sure but this is a fairly low impact turn from my opponent So what we can do here, guys, and this is a little bit uh, tricky of a line here, but what I can do is I can actually hard cast the collector roof here. I will do this post combat, and should they counter it, I will have a hard cast force of uh, mind break trap up. This resolves. Okay.
Okay. Figure. Wish I could cast it. Snapcaster is a possibility here, but we're not playing around that. Okay, so my opponent needs to, I guess, throw a tinker together here. And Sphinx of the Steel one certainly would be very strong here and would be likely to get me, but... Oh, Besaidu right off the top. So I was going to say Besaidu's are out. We have three of them in our deck, so... Okay, nice clean win from us there. Despite on the draw... I would never be happy to see my Bazaar of Baghdad get shut off. I shouldn't say that. There are times I keep non-Bazaar hands. But uh, our deck does function without Bazaar of Baghdad. Unlike any of the other Bazaar decks out there, they do require you more often than not to have a Bazaar to make their deck work. Ours doesn't. And so what I mean by that is uh, Dredge, Hollow Vine, now called, uh, more affectionately known as Counter Vine. Those are the two most common dredge decks out there, or bizarre decks, excuse me. All right, I don't think I want to do anything else here. Let's try this. Yeah, I mean, I have to keep it, right? It's not optimal. <clears throat> we have Force of Vigor up if we need it. See, this is a situation where if they needle Bazaar, I'm thrilled. Let's hope they force a will this. This is beautiful bait. They did not. Okay. Um, I guess I do black, black. Like maybe, what if they got tabernacle here? What if they got an ancestral? What if they didn't turn trap on here? This is so suboptimal. Right? Because what I'm looking to do here, to be clear, is they either got one of two things. One of three things. I think the most likely thing that they got is Tinker. I also think it's because I think that they think I'm on Bazaar. The other one is that they got Ancestral Recall because their hand is weak. Or the other one is they're trying to catch me with my pants down and get me with... Uh, tabernacle you see i kind of if it's tabernacle it's really reasonable for me to hard cast the blood ghast here and then play the yavamaya cradle of growth and cast the collector roof but that leaves them with the underground sea which i'm not as thrilled with like they could be dis dismember all sorts of different things and i can't really play around that long term but because I don't have a bazaar, this is kind of a dead card in my hand, and this is a card that will keep recurring, so I am going to do that. Against my better judgment, this is what I'm on.
I am going to force a Migger here. I, I feel like I have to be desperate in this situation and just hope it's not an ancestral. It looks like they've done the tinker line here. I'm going to take their white source here. And I think I cycle now if I find a bazaar. Okay, that's really nice. Okay, so there's their tinker target. Really awkward here because I could hard cast this, right? Well, let's see if this thing gets in. Just got to do it. And I've got my clock on the table here. So I just need my opponent to falter here. One more land could set them up. All right. Well, I mean, that's not terrible. I just need them to brick here. I'd love to get a wasteland. So they definitely want to tinker here. Okay. Wasteland. Oh. Well, I got them next turn, so this is kind of, they probably have me, and if they find a land, and they probably, I have them if they don't. All right, we got there. I mean, we played our gambit fairly well there, I think. Uh, a very aggressive force of vigor, telegraphing that they got Tinker. Tinker was definitely their best win condition in that particular circumstance, although I think it was fairly risky. Well, I could see it from my opponent's perspective. They did actually have a force of will, and they did not go for the bait on the Black Lotus, which was very good restraint on their part. So me having a force of vigor in my hand to disrupt their ability to get their their Mox Emerald there and taking them off Tinker was not that big of a threat. Long story short, they had an answer. But what they did not anticipate was that I was not on a Bazaar opener and I had a turn one collector oof, which they were forced to answer, which then opened the door for me with the Force of Vigor to take them off of the line of Tinker. And I mean, had it been Ancestral, had it been Tabernacle, things could have gone south for me there very quickly. But we did guess right out of the one of the three. I think it was reasonable deduction on our part. So we will take that win. It was a, definitely a close one. Okay, guys, here we are in round three of our Vintage League, and we're playing Cradle Vine. We won the die roll. We'll powder that one. Okay, so this one definitely is a keep. opponent knows what we're on. All right. So what are we looking for with our once upon a time here? I mean, I think it's contextual on what my opponent's playing, and we're not going to have that information here. Um, I think a Hollow One could be good. I think a Benjamin could be good. Uh, I would not mind a Gaze Cradle, potentially. So let's start out there and see. Hard to say. The problem that I'm finding myself in this particular position is, is that if I get wastelanded, I don't have any recourse to follow up here. Um, 
as I stand now, the bazaar may fix that. So I think that said, I'm probably going to take a basking root wall here. We'll have to see how we can shape up here. Vine would be nice. Because I do think we want to hold Force of Vigor open. Okay, we found a bazaar anyways, so I think that's decent. It's not a not a super explosive start. We never found a green source either, which is something to to take note of. But let's see what we're up against here. Like a wasteland go would be just perfect time walk for us. Excuse me. Okay. White initiative. Okay. Well, that's pretty scary for us. Let's see if we get waste landed here. Yeah, we are. Okay. So this would have been a piece of cake if they didn't have the black lotus there. The good news is, is that we are going to take the initiative here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack with these two. Now they can keep the initiative if they solitude. Actually, I'm going to be aggressive here. And this way I can chump block. I would have liked to have kept two blockers back to keep them off the initiative. But I think that's okay. And I just really have to hope that they don't have any fast mana here. I, I hope they were just on... Uh, Black Lotus there to try and get ahead. Definitely I'm going to block here. This is suboptimal because it does untap. But if we can maintain the initiative here, this is strong for us. Okay. Actually, I'm going to attack with my Basking Root Wall to sit back on defense here. Like if I can somehow get through this with the initiative maintained, like it's pretty strong. I'm about to trap them next turn. Okay. Love a cradle here. I can goad this into me next turn.
I mean, I don't think I can play scared around around it. I'm going to arena here. <laughs> They're just going to block here, right? Yeah, I, 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 guys, I just think that I may be playing this really conservatively. It's in, it's an interesting dance because my opponent here is um, not in a great spot. Now, if they have fast mana here, it does change things. They have been playing conservatively. If they can just steal the initiative, which it looks like they're going to, I, I, I don't like my line as much. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty good. So I goad it, and I guess I have to block. It's the decision I've made. Hmm. I like catacombs. That's pretty solid. Um, I am going to wasteland them here. I'm going to attack in. We'll see if they just throw a block up here. They might not. And Basaju is pretty nice because Basaju lets me cast the Brute Walla which can kill this. And next turn, if I'm able to hold the initiative in this particular circumstance, I'm going to go into the Throne of the Dead, which is really strong for me. That's a really interesting exercise, that game, in how I approached it and whether it was the correct line or not, because I was very defensive there. And I think there's a strong argument for being extremely offensive there. And I held back. I used Goad uh, for the first time and uh yeah anyways i mean that's just a byproduct of the difference between play play draw against a deck like initiative it uh I, I lost that game for sure if i was on the draw we get better though post board against this deck <coughs> excuse me so i have had a little bit of a change of heart in how i like to approach this matchup and when i'm on the draw I think Mindbreak Trap is actually a very reasonable thing to be doing against them. And the reason is, is that they are extremely reliant on going Mox, Mox, you know, Lotus or whatever, be it into their play and turning Mindbreak Trap on. And being a player that has played a moderate amount of White Initiative, I have gotten absolutely destroyed by Mindbreak Trap, but unrecoverable at times because you're so reliant on that turn one play. Now, one of the detractors of this type of a line is if they have the Chancellor of the Annex, which just has a trigger that counters your first spell. But that said, you can't worry about that. So we got to cut to, a Collector Roof is actually very reasonable against what my, my opponent is doing, but it's a lot more difficult to employ on the draw. And so therefore I think we can probably safely cut those. I also don't think Basaju is very good against what my opponent's doing. Misstep does hit swords. It, it could, it, it, it has minimal value in this particular matchup. So there is an argument for taking it out, but I do think my opponents run swords with plowshares mostly. So I'm going to do this. Earlier on in my, some of my testing against white initiative, I was under the impression that endurance was a reasonable thing to be doing, uh, to which it is. There is merit, but I think it's better on the play once again, because it's a three casting card spell and you want to be casting this if you're using it against uh, initiative, but it, this stops a three, three white plume cold or an anointed peacekeeper cold. And uh, I've kind of cut off that a little bit because it's just so hard to employ it. 
but something to, to keep into consideration. And I, you know, if my gut was telling me to use it, I certainly would, but I think I'm going to try this configuration today. And of note, I have blood gas in my deck here, and these are not a card that I typically play with, uh, in my cradle vine version, something more that canister has been running and, um, I'm trying it out uh, again. It has been quite good for me in the current metagame. So this is an easy mulligan. You know, if I hit Bazaar of Baghdad, this hand actually looks solid. Like, could I keep this? But if I don't hit a land, I'm just in a world of hurt. I don't think that I can keep that. I think it would be very greedy to do that. Powder, okay. Got to put one of these back. I guess I'll put the Singleton Caracas. It's the only one I have in my deck. Wow, that's a lot of blood gas going there, but. Hmm. Could dismember. Problem is, is follow up. I don't really have anything going on. I guess I'll keep this. This is this is not optimal. But I don't really want to go down to five versus this deck. Yeah, so mind break on, right? Yep. So we can't currently deal with that. Unless I find my basic forest off my once upon a time, which is not what I'm really looking to do. We're going to use our spell here because we don't want to use it in our turn because we're wanting to cast something, hopefully. So we did hit a bazaar. Hmm. I've got to get rid of this Archon. That's got to be my first order of business. And, you know, if they have an anointed peacekeeper here, obviously that makes it a lot more difficult for me. But, I mean, this is the start from White Initiative. This is the start that you're looking to avoid from them. They had a they had their turn one big play into Archon of Amiria, which is the worst for me. And this is likely to be a seasoned Dungeoneer, which is bad in its own sense. It's not a wasteland though, so that's good. Maybe they're saving it if they have it for for the bazaar. What does that mean? Oh, I'm baffled. Um, are they trying to hardcast a solitude? Like, do I just? Well, I can't. I have. I have to get rid of this now. Next turn, we can look to collect roof. I'd love to do it now, but maybe we find a, maybe we find a, a Lotus here. Okay. That's pretty good. Insofar as that we don't get tabernacled. I guess I can pay for the hollow one that way. Oops, I don't want to cycle. That could have been bad if I had mana floating. All right. Well, that was very bizarre. Why did my opponent not do anything? Like, are they just all land? Okay, this feels like maybe a solitude. Is it elemental they're setting it on? It is. Okay. So I am going to attack in with my hollow one here. I guess what we're going to do is we're going to force our opponent's hand here. We're going to take them off the cavern on elemental. And if they preemptively do this, which is solid, it's still good. Yes. Okay. Gets my hollow one. But what this sets me up for is to be able to do a... Hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, there's no reason not to spin, right? No, we're going to spin. I just have to hope that I can find another land here if I get Wasteland and Tabernacled. And this is a pretty good if it works. So it takes them off two of their lands. All right. Okay. So they did indeed go after my cradle here. Gonna play it. Can't get through yet. And I will come off them. So they did have the tabernacle. How interesting. Okay. So it's a little unfortunate for me because uh, I'm going to lose a good chunk of my board, but I am going to pay for the collector roof here. And it is going to tax my opponent significantly. The, the problem here that I'm faced with is that my opponent um, can gain life and attack through. And I cannot deal with that right now. So we talked about this line exactly that. Strip mine or wasteland into tabernacle. And it kind of makes sense given the weakness of their hand. But we're going to try spin here. Hmm. We just have to hope that my oof hangs around for next turn. Or my bizarre, excuse me. And my oof for that matter. Because if I can get this Benjamin going into one of my cradles this turn, it's very strong. I'm asking a lot, but Tabernacle comes at a price for sure. And there's been many times that I have leveraged that against my opponent out of this deck because of the robust mana base that my deck carries. My opponent really should be attacking here. I don't know what they're scared of, but uh, it's it's just a positive VV for them to do so. So we are looking for uh, a root walla and a cradle, uh, specifically a Gaia's cradle. So this is fantastic. Because I found the wasteland to be able to deal with the tabernacle. Now, this takes some of the pressure off of their mana base here, but that's okay. And I will attack in. we got to start getting some pressure on my opponent here. And you can seal the wasteland to post combat so they don't know what they're dealing with. And now we're going to make our opponent pay for this. And then end of turn, we're going to wasteland their tabernacle. Funny enough, I don't even know that we're really winning this game, to be honest with you. Yeah, Thalia's pretty good here. The question I have, the question I keep asking myself here, is do I go after this Cavern of Souls and tax them so they have to pay for both of these creatures? 
Like, how valuable are these cards? Like, I, I don't think that's really a winning line for me. I think we just have to get rid of this Tabernacle and hope that our deck can carry us through. We'll do some churning here. Fantastic. We're looking for a Gaia's Cradle, specifically. I think that's going to be one of our best cards here. Okay. I don't see a reason not to do this. Okay, that's unfortunate. I'm going to attack him with the vine here. And this, the vine going to the yard here and getting a trade for these two is like pretty big game for me. The problem that I'm faced with right now is that my opponent is very likely to cast an initiative creature here. I've already got my basic in my hand, which is not ideal. Are they going to attack here? No. Wow. All right. Well, that's what we're looking for, our Vengevines in the yard. Okay. That is not a great draw. But we're going to try to continue to put pressure on my opponent here. Now, it's possible my opponent is playing Containment Priest here. An Anointed Peacekeeper would always also be quite bad for me as well, but... So my opponent's thinking about this. No, nope, they just want to go down. Okay. So understanding how to utilize two bazaars in your deck is pretty important. Um, when you have a, a situation like this, you're, you're wanting to draw the card before using your bazaar. And the reason to do that is you have a higher, you're, first of all, you're going to have a card left over in your hand afterwards, which could be a, an important land here, so we don't get blown out by Tabernacle. If you don't have cards in your hand, I'm of the belief we do what we did last turn, which was double churn, which is to get Benjamines in the yard and get your piddly winged root wall is into play um, to help turn on your Gaia's cradles. Of course, we've got blood ghasts as well to, to help initiate that. But um, and other times, you it, it's contextual, right? Like we've got uh, all four of our blazing root wallas are already gone. One of the reasons to not churn with no cards in your hand is that if the third card on your library is a blazing root wall, you can't get it into play. And you may need that to be discarded to the bazaar. So there, there are different scenarios as to how and when you tap your bazaar as a bazaar player. So what we're looking for now is a root walla. And we have how many left? We've got three, and we have uh, another Hex Drinker that we can cast. So let's see what we can do here. If we can get these vines into play, it's really good. Hmm. So that did not work out, that particular spin. But we're going to play our Hollow one here, and we're going to try again. We only have 14 cards, and we have three Basking Root Wallas in our deck. We did not hit that turn, so that's really unfortunate. But once again, we are going to go in, and I suspect this is going to facilitate a block, because my opponent has to be feeling somewhat panicked about the sheer size of my army coming in. Now, a Tabernacle cleans that right up. But of note, we are very low on cards in our deck here. <coughs> yep. So what would be bad for us is if my opponent actually did have a um, Contagion Priest. Containment Priest. Okay, here they come. That's really hard on me, this card, as we currently stand. So we need Gaia's Cradles. How many Gaia's Cradles do we have left? One, two are gone. All three of our blood ghasts. So 
So we have one Gaia's Cradle left. And this is a pretty difficult situation because uh, if I discard this off my... Like, I want to actively bizarre here. But if I lose my Gaia's Cradle, I think I lose this game. Potentially, anyways. But I'm going to do it. Actually, is it worth it? 12 cards. I'm going to do it. This time I will draw. Well, we're going in with the hollow one here, guys. Nine cards. We can't really do turbo churning anymore, unfortunately. Tabernacle, huge blowout. All right, well, we have to keep the hollow one, I feel like, right? Okay, his cradle's not looking very good either. I think I let the hollow one go here. Yeah. I mean, we knew this was coming. They only have two tabernacles in their deck. I feel like we probably lost this one. Okay, there's the root wall. Huh? So let's find a Gaius Cradle here. We did. But of course it comes at a steep price. If I could get those vines in. I guess we still have a chance here. We have one more root wall, all right. Yeah, we do. Let's see if we hit it. Tally would have been all right there. Well, I don't know that we can win now. How many hollow ones do we have? Three. Hollow ones are gone. We have four cards left in our deck, and all four of our Vengemines are in the yard. But we do have one more Blazing Root Walla. So if there's another... Do I have any Hex Drinkers? Two, and I think I lost one in the Exile, right? Yep, no Hex Drinkers. Yeah, I don't know that I have any creatures. Outside of the one Root Walla. Oh, they got my Cradle. Okay, so this is going to get me. This gets me. I guess I'll see what I can do here.
I don't think there's an out, but what I could do is next turn I'm going to draw. And then I have one opportunity, because if I can, I'm going to kill my collector roof here. But being able to get through with three Vengevines could kill my opponent here. If there's a world where I can do it, I I haven't done. I could sit down and do the finite math, guys. Just to, if there is something else in my deck, I can I can cast. So this is risky for my opponent because that's one at less blocker that they might have. You know, like I might have another collector for some damn thing that can turn this on. I, I don't know. I don't even know if that would be enough. But there's the root walla. But if I discard this, right? Like, how do I get out of this? I don't have any gay as cradles. I need this to be able to discard to keep a creature in my hand to cast. I guess if I had a one casting cost card, but I don't think I do. Nope, didn't have it. That was a really good game. It's very rare that I churn through my whole deck like that. But super tight game. No, I, I like the way I'm set up here. The initiative matchup is always a tough one. But I do think I'm running one of the best decks to be able to combat what they're doing. Wonder how different that would have been had I had a couple blood gas left in my deck with haste. Probably fairly significant. Yep. Very nice hand. Love that mind break trap. Okay. We don't have any pow big power. Currently, as we stand. So losing these two, uh, it's not the end-all, be-all. But I'm hoping that one of two things happens. That my opponent wastelands me, or goes all in on fast mana and turns on my mind break trap. And we can untap and find a collector oof. I, I should have sided in an extra oof. I think I have three of them out. So a little bit of a misplay on my point, my point, uh, my part post sideboard there. I, I really should have the at least two of them in. Yep, that's scary. Well, that was the best play they could make. Oh, they, yep, they shut off my trap. Wow, that was really huge from my opponent turning off my mind break trap there. I, I did not expect Thali to come down and be a player that way, but.
All right, not liking my chances here. This is pretty, pretty tough, but we, we're going to need some help. This is not optimal, guys, but I think it's uh, what I have to do here. Very vulnerable to solitude, swords to plowshares here, but I think that this is just one of the best lines that I can have here, given the current context of the board state. I certainly would have considered wastelanding here, but... Of note, we are five minutes on our clock here now this game should be resolved by that time but i've obviously been playing very slow with my commentary here that's gonna take it I'm going to try and get this thing out of solitude range here. Okay. I feel like they have a solitude, but it is what it is. We're going to bazaar. I could go for the Vengevine here, try it, try and Bazaar again. I think I'm just really going to try and get this Hex Drinker out of range as fast as I can. And if they got Solitude, it just is, it just is what it is, right? Like, but if they don't have Solitude, I'm probably winning the game. So they do have it. I, I can tell by their paws, but we're we're in on it. They don't have it. Okay. Well, we're going to take the initiative. We're going to get a basic here, which is a card that we can discard to, and we'll see if we can hold it. I mean, my opponent didn't do anything last turn. Okay. They're coming in. I, I'm just going to double block here, guys. I've already got my guy going here. They do have a mint full over there, but I have them on a two-turn clock. I'm going to Peacekeeper gone. Okay. Yep, so they could take the initiative back, so this traps me. So I might need some help here.
that was kind of the worst case scenario. Did they have a, another initiative creature? And I don't think I'm going to be able to hold the initiative next turn, which is unfortunate because this is going to put them into the trap and then they can go into archives or catacombs. I may actually put the forge on top of my hex drinker. Okay, they're going to go with my creature. Okay. That is very reasonable. We, we, I guess we're going to need some help here. Okay, and that's definitely help. Okay, let's bizarre here. If we can get this Venge Vine going, guys, it's really strong. So, unfortunately, we did not. Could turn this into a four four here. Four five six, which can kill their guy. So this is a little bit sus because I guess if they wasteland here, the tabernacle does get a lot worse for me. I'm just trying to make it so those, I, I, I obviously want the Yavamaya Cradle of Growth here. I've got to watch my time, but this should come to a conclusion. Um, I also want to be in a position to hard cast a Benjamin next turn, but I just think that I probably should discard the Benjamin here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hard cast the Hex Drinker. Before we go to combat, I am going to pump my Hex Drinker up to a 4-4, hopefully. And now we go to combat. I am going to attack with my Hex Drinker here. Steal the initiative back. And I guess I forge the other Hex Drinker. Right, it's a 4-4. Four, four. I think this works. Makes it bigger than their creature. And if they solitude it, it's six life for me. I currently have Tabernacle of Pendra Veil vale covered. Okay. So that was a really good game. Um... Did not think I was going to win that. I think my opponent had a very nice opener game three on the draw with Black Lotus, Ancient Tomb into Thalia, shutting off my Mind Break Trap into White Plume Adventure. And Hex Drinker, just the bottom line, Hex Drinker was the ace here for us in this particular game. So we're going to take that one, guys. That was a really interactive match. I hope you enjoyed it. I will uh, see you guys next round. Okay, guys, here we are in round four of our Vintage League. We played Funky Monkey earlier today, but it was probably over an hour ago. Very possible they've switched decks up on us. So let's see what we got here. That is an easy powder. This hand looks great. Well, great's an overstatement, but if they are on PO still, we have... Uh, 
we have some answers here. If they're not on PO, we're probably in trouble. But if they are on PO, we have some game here because we've got an answer to the Sphinx, potentially Citadel, uh, as well as Force of Vigor. But if they've gone the other way on Bazaar, reasonable chance we lose. I, I think against the Squeevine variants, we are not favored. I think they are slightly favored in general. Uh, certainly a difficult match, game one. So let's find a Vengevine in a root wall here. I think this would be a really strong start for us. Okay, so this act actually ended up being fairly good discard equity from me here. Uh, There is some merit to discarding a Beseju here and keeping the other Root Walla here for the Force of Vigor, but I like in a pinch being able to play my Beseju next turn to get the, the Blood Gas back, and it gets us that much closer to being able to turn on a Beseju if need be for casting one. So let's see what we're up against here. Yep. That was really nice. I like this a lot. I don't think I'm going to overreact here. So here's the thing. What are the likelihood that my opponent is going to tinker me next turn that I'm going to want Cradle up? This would be 7. I put them to 12. I'd have to get this through a Force of Vigor. I think I'm going to pump. I think playing conservatively here is not necessary. Despite it's reasonable and defensible, I'm, I'm going to do this. And we're going to see what happens here. If in a pinch, I can Bizarre Baghdad here for, I don't know, something. Time walk is reasonable. Uh oh. Yeah, hard cast citadel. Okay. Mentor. Hate to do it. We got to respond. So we did get burned here a bit. Whew. Okay. I am going to bring in the Caracas. They're showing me that they are Asper colors, and I think it's nice to have the ability to send back a Lavinia. Lavinia hurts any type of bizarre strategy, uh, specifically the counter vine, hollow vine versions, uh, squee vine. But our deck does have the ability to beat it, but it is quite an impactful card nonetheless because it shuts off our hollow ones, our root wallets from being able to work. Um, I mean, they can still bring back Vengevines from the yard through the Lavinia. Uh, I guess the nice thing about our build is we do have blood gas that we can push through as well, but we have the ability to cast our spells as well. So we, we can get around it somewhat. It is 
impactful, but not in the same breadth as it is against something like Countervine. So I think this is a reasonable outlook here. Oh, we want to cut one more if we can. I think we cut a Bloodgast. Let's try this out. <clears throat> This is a really nice looking hand here. I'm gonna need some help with reference to setting up the the Benjamin here. I'm gonna see if I can bait here with this somehow. I'm going to have to try and find a collector roof later. My my discard equity is not very good here. I'm going to use it now. I know it seems reasonably low impact to hit a mox in this situation, but it may not be turned on again, and taking a mox away is not irrelevant. I am going to try and hit the vine here. So this is unlike not likely winning given the amount of interaction I have in my hand still, which is zero. But my opponent doesn't know that, and they may play cautiously here. Uh, thus opening me up to getting another bazaar here. So they're just tinkering by the looks of it, which is not just a uh, uh, nothing. That's probably game ending for me, but we'll see. It does require them to play another land, which means that if they do go for Citadel, that we um, they have a chance to brick. Okay. They have not played a land. Maybe they get a counter spell. It's pretty uh, pretty vicious there. Black Lotus and uh, Sapphire into Astra Ancestral. We're not likely to win this. That's just too powerful. Like Yog Will is normally not a card that I'd be worried about at this stage in the game, but it just, given the context of their hand, it's really bad for me. But let's see. I'm not quite ready to concede yet. I mean, it's obvious I don't have anything in my hand. It's possible they put themselves in a position where I can just kill them here. Okay. Not likely, but it's possible. Do they, just, do they have a main deck Sphinx? Probably do. Be able to pull off another Tinker here. But what that does is it sets me up to be able to blow them out with a... Uh, Potentially blow them out with a Besaju. Okay, this is not good. Yep. I guess just a tinker into a Sphinx here. They're just going to bounce their mana crypt. 
they, I mean, they have to, right? Yeah. Oh, they've got PO. Okay. PO is going to ice me. I, I will concede to a PO. Well done. I think I like the way we're configured here. Yep. Nice to keep a solid seven here. We're, we're definitely going to require some sculpting here. Our goal is to be able to get a turn two collector roof down, or, or for that matter, turn one if we can find a Lotus. I was kind of laughing to myself earlier today when I was playing against uh, the White Initiative deck there. Like the propensity for that deck to have a turn one Black Lotus seems inordinately high. Like I just, I feel like every time I play it, that's what they have <laughs> Black Lotus <laughs> into whatever they're doing. <laughs> Maybe that's just recently, but anyways, back to the game at hand here. Let's once upon a time and see what we get. They did mulligan, which is good. Are they contemplating countering this? Oh, that would be so amazing if they were. Well, I think we need to take a Yava Maya here. And what this does is it ensures our ability. We love a force of vigor here. It ensures our ability to be able to cast a collector roof next turn. My opponent's deck should not be playing wastelands. I mean, I wish it was a gay as cradle, but that's okay. And this also makes us not as vulnerable to tabernacle because uh, if we were on a gay as cradle plan here and these get tabernacled, then that does not ensure that we can cast collector roof. So the, this is one of the true bonuses of playing the Avamaya Cradle of Growth. Now, of course, we could just be dead here, but let's see. It's scary. Not feeling like I'm in an amazing position here, but they like what they have on top. Okay. That's what we got. It's very strong if I can resolve it and keep it around. And I think th those are big asks. Okay, so my opponent at least is two for wanting themselves on that play. And we're also going to be able to do it again next turn. So time walk is fine. I'm not happy about it, but, but it's fine considering the other things they could be doing. It's essentially them cycling here. So we do need to fade another turn, unfortunately. But I like our chances of resolving Collector Roof next turn, and we have Wasteland up. So let's see what happens. Okay. Hopefully it's not a Mentor. Mentor would be pretty devastating. Okay. 
Is this a tinker for next turn? Oh, they're doing ancestral. Makes sense. Okay, that's good for me that they tapped out there. So if we can fade a force of will here, that's actually decent too, believe it or not. I like all these cards in my hand. They had a second force. Okay, and they got rid of a PO. I am going to wasteland them here. So we're in a pretty vulnerable state right now. I was really hoping I'd be able to get one of those collectors through, and my opponent has had double force. I guess the good news is they are low on resources here. I am not going to force a vigor. Oh, I'm going into force a vigor now. Definitely. Okay, so opponents is digging here trying to find a way out of this i guess fluster storm would be their play here but i mean i don't think we're i mean my opponent even if this were resolves I'm, I'm not thrilled with my position here okay Like we're pretty low on resources, but okay. Well, I mean, I'm moving close to hard casting this. A, a land off the top helps me hard cast it. They're drawing a top. doesn't actually help me kill them so i think i just have to play it safe here like they've got two significant outs here i mean i realize there's a bunch of cards that are nasty out of their deck but tinker into citadel sphinx and i do have that somewhat covered and mentor would be a worse one probably for me because i don't have an answer to a mentor yeah so there's their mentor and that's really bad for me because I can't actually get through it. I think I'm going to have to kill the Pithy Needle here. We're just going to... Wait, wait. They don't have a lot going on here. Well, I shouldn't say that. I mean, I don't know what they have going on, but... Yeah, 
Yeah, the mentor was unfortunate here. I don't foresee myself actually winning this through the mentor, but maybe. Maybe. We'll see. Probably should have done this a turn earlier if I knew that that was going to happen, but I wasn't that worried about the actual bazaar being shut off because of the presence of Yavamaya, but yeah, it's a little bit awkward. I mean, they could PO now for one. And they may be contemplating that. Okay. This is not the worst. I mean, let's go. Let's hope they don't have an answer, guys. No force of will here would be sweet. Okay. I'm going to play it out so I have Tabernacle insulation here. Yeah, so what was a PO? Oh, interesting. Okay. Makes sense. I mean, it's pretty good. They send their mentor back to their hand now. Cost them a potential turn because they have to recast it, but it's still a pretty solid play. It's not going to be easy for me to get through that, but if they did not find anything, they found land and counter spells, um, we could be okay here. Like a mentor is not going to do it, right? I'm coming through for a significant amount of damage here as well. So it's really contextual as to what they grabbed out of their hand there. Or drew from the PO. Yeah, they found the land. So there's their mentor. But they have the mocks. Thought it was an emerald they had to their hand. So maybe they found a couple moxes here. I hope not, but. Okay. I do think we bizarre here in the upkeep. I don't see a reason not to. This could turn on a counter spell from them if I if I do hit a brute wall, which is a possibility they could be that aggressive to Okay. The question is, do they have anything here? Like, can I just go in with everything? I feel like I do. It's a bit of a blowout. Right? They go one, two. They have to block there. So I'm going for this. I just have to hope that they do not have anything. Yep. All right. Not going to play with the mocks here. Puts them to two. They didn't do anything last turn, so we have to fade one more turn here, guys. Okay, they found something, it looks like. Okay. So this is about as good as it gets for me, because it's a desperation play. And I don't think it's going to be easy for them to get out of this, having drawn two cards, but it's possible. Okay, and they have a Mox. Just got to cross our fingers here that they didn't find anything. 
mentor. Okay. Did they find another mox? They did. Okay. We're going with everything here. They have to, I, I believe I will get their mentor here because they have to block the blasting root while they'll hold the one in the Vegemine, but we don't want to bizarre first and try and turn on their stuff here. Yeah, I'm going to do it this way, just in case. Okay, puts them to one. I have Besage you here. That, that's the one card that really gets me as Mentor here, but we'll see. They're at one life. Like, we have a Sphinx of the Steel Wind covered. How do I feel about this? I think it's okay. A bit nerve-wracking, but I could have responded and let them draw one card. Okay. Nice win there. We beat Mentor twice, and that very rarely happens. Um, really good games. This uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this set of videos because I feel like there has been some really interactive games. See you guys for a trophy match. Okay, guys, here we are in round five of our Vintage League, and we are playing Cradlevine, and we're actually playing for a trophy, and we won the die roll, which is a great start. Our opponent has a fair bit of range, as I recall. I feel like they like to card Monty. I mean, we have to powder this. Much nicer. I mean, it's a good hand. Now, I feel like we would be pretty vulnerable to something like combo. But if we can get this vine going turn one and we can worry about untapping and doing our business next turn, I think that's a pretty good start. Okay. I mean, this is pretty good, right? They force? Yep, okay. I am going to play the mocks out. I don't know what they're playing, but the turn one tabernacle, even on the in main deck, could just be devastating, and it's unnecessary to play into something like that. Okay, they conceded. What did we see from them? A dress down. Does that mean they're playing combo? Dress down. What does that mean? No idea what we're playing against here, guys, but I think I'm just going to hedge towards we're playing against combo and try something like this. I like the mind break traps here because I, I think my opponent uh, typically audibles towards the broken style decks. And, you know, if they're dead cards and they're not, wor they're not what we're looking for, we hopefully will have an opportunity to, to discard them. So if we had a bazaar here, I think this would be a good hand. Okay, this is 
This is solid. Put our powder away and we'll see what our opponent's got for us. Okay. Mind break drop sure would have been nice there. Yeah, this is unfortunate. Opponents had a, a very strong start. Okay, let's see if we can find a collector roof here. That does allow us to cast a collector roof. Do they counter this? Hmm. We have to try and win here, guys. I could sit back on a Mox Emerald here and uh, I beg your pardon on a Besaju, but it just doesn't seem like a winning line to me. Tough discard here. If we get hit with a Tabernacle here, it's unfortunate, but it's not the end all be all. One, another POA, yeah, just enough to get under. Yep, can't stop it. Probably just dead here. Just not even worried about me here. They're just on. Maybe they didn't find gas. I, I don't know. Like if they have a hull breacher here, it is bad for me. But we got to try and win, guys. Believe it or not, that, that is not terrible. The problem I have here is that I've got to discard some cards here, but. I think I have to get rid of the Black Lotus. I really would like the opportunity to cast a Mind Break Trap here. It is solid, but I do need to take their Academy away. And I think just having Besiege you is solid. Okay. Not ideal, guys. But we're going to take that academy away and just hope. And they didn't have a PO there. We are getting in for some damage here. I don't know. Maybe I wanted to get rid of the mind break trap here. I'm not sure.
Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's a good one, guys. I, I think my opponent probably has force of will here, but the awkward spot for me is, is that I come off Paseju to do this. But, I mean, this is just a devastating line, right? I'm going to go to combat here and see what my opponent has to see if they top off of, tap off of force of will. I mean, I don't technically need to cast the Collector Roof here, but I really think it's so obtusely powerful. If it, It's very likely to win us the game if it resolves, and I don't know what my opponent has. Almost assuredly, it's Counter Magic. They've used two POs. They have one more PO in their deck. Call me crazy, guys. I don't want to turn on any of their counter magic in their hand. I think having Besaju here is... Ooh, okay. That's scary. They know I have a Besaju. So they're probably just going to go for a PO here, and so I maybe got punished for that line. But I do have a Mind Break Trap. Tinker. Okay, I have an answer to Tinker. One. Two. Three. Okay, there you have it, guys. A nice clean 5 0 for us. I felt like this was a really good league. I, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, I appreciate you hanging out. And if you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. Feel free to leave any comments, and I will get back to you. See you next time, guys.